My name is Britta DeMars, and my piece is titled The Gospel of Mona. This is a stuffed fabric sculpture. It's about six feet tall. It's made with paint, sequins, and embroidery. It was in the Nasty Women Rituals of Resistance exhibit. Underneath it was a black banner with the word patriarchy painted in white. The banner was intended to be stepped on and become dirty and tattered over the course of the exhibit. The piece was inspired by Mona el Taaway's book, The Seven Necessary Sins of Women and Girls. Mona el Taaway is an Egyptian Muslim and a radical feminist. She begins any public talk or video with the words, Fuck the Patriarchy, accompanied by her fists with the middle fingers raised. Her book was challenging for me in several ways, partly because of our different backgrounds. She is a Muslim woman who spent part of her youth in Saudi Arabia and made pilgrimages to Mecca and wore the hijab. Whereas I am a white woman from New England who was raised without any religion, she is a very bold and assertive woman, and I'm really pretty reserved and introverted. As I was reading her book, I realized that she's telling the story of and speaking to women from all different backgrounds and cultures. And what we have in common is the influence of misogyny in our lives, in some form or another, and often in ways we don't even realize. I've been reflecting a lot on my own experiences with misogyny and the anger I feel as a result of being ignored or talked down to, or even assaulted just because I'm a woman. In the introduction to Seven Necessary Sins, El Tahawe writes, Christianity preaches the seven deadly sins. The Gospel of Mona presents instead the seven necessary sins women and girls need to employ to defy, disobey, and disrupt the patriarchy. I call them sins, but of course they are not. They are what women and girls are not supposed to be or do or want. They are condemned as sins by a patriarchy that demands we acquiesce to, not destroy, its dictates. For me, the expression of anger is a necessary part of healing, and the use of profanity gives me a sense of release. So, why is it more acceptable for men to express anger and use profanity than women? Sewing can also be healing in a different way. It can be a very calming and meditative activity. So there's an interesting contrast I noticed as I was engaged in this very quiet, methodical activity of sewing and embroidery, all the while creating this angry and confrontational piece. While I was making this piece, I also started to read more about the feminist the history of feminist artists in the 60s and 70s, and their use of textiles in their work as a way of making political statements. I'm very interested in this kind of subversiveness, using a decorative craft such as embroidery, something Victorian-era ladies did to occupy themselves, to create an art that is a form of activism and resistance. I was taught to sew by my mother and grandmother, and when I sew, I do feel connected to my grandmothers who made clothing and dolls and crafts. I feel proud to have learned this skill. At the same time, I'm trying to extricate myself from part of this lineage. I'm very conscious of the misogyny my mother and grandmothers were subject to, and the ways they often internalized it ways that they unconsciously maintained their own oppression and unintentionally passed it down through generations. I've had to come to terms with the ways I have internalized misogyny in my own life. This is a difficult realization, but very necessary. In May 2019, Mona El Tahawe wrote in a New York Times opinion piece titled Enough with Crumbs, I Want the Cake. In it, she writes, power is anarchy. It dismantles patriarchal social structures and allows us to rebuild them with equity at their foundation. Power for a few exceptional women is not equality or empowerment for all, and it is no reason to celebrate. We must define power in a way that liberates us from patriarchy's hierarchies. 
That is why I am an anarchist, why I defy, disobey, and disrupt. We must imagine the world we want so that we can redefine what power is and what a powerful woman looks like and how power can be used to subvert rather than uphold patriarchy. We must imagine better. We can imagine better. By imagining that better world, we invent the power required for our freedom. So thanks to Nasty Women of Connecticut, Luciana McClure and the organizers, collaborators, and artists for the opportunity to participate and share the gospel of Mona. <laughs>